Why do Soviet armored vehicles use a log on the back? This is a curious feature that we will see in many Soviet armored vehicles, and these very commonly seem to carry a tree trunk for no clear reason. We will even see this on tanks from other countries like German tanks in World War II or American tanks in World War II and the Cold War. In this video, we will explain the purpose of these logs, the history behind this practice and why it is so common. The truth is that logs on tanks are something very common to see throughout almost all of tank history with several purposes. In World War II, this practice was so standardized that Soviet tanks carried a log almost from the time they left the factory. This was not at all an improvised practice by the crew as we will see in other armies. The Red Army carried a whole methodology about it. The logs that had to be carried in the armored vehicles had to be between 190 and 220 millimeters thick. They also had to be 3 meters long. They were so long that they stuck out a bit from the sides. So they started mounting specific clips on the back and sides of the tanks to carry these logs. The purpose of these. The Soviet Union's territories were incredibly vast and extensive. Most towns and villages did not have paved roads. This did not have to be a problem for a tank. Tanks really have the ability to pass through any terrain, but once the winter ice melts in these regions, within a matter of a couple of weeks, all roads and fields become very swampy and completely filled with mud, making it difficult for all armored vehicles and artillery pieces to pass. This continues to happen today, even in the ongoing Russian-Ukrainian conflict, we can see that armored operations come to a halt once the winter ice melts. The tank tracks are a very smart way to distribute the tank's weight evenly and to have a large contact surface with the ground, making them excellent for advancing through difficult and rugged terrain. But believe it or not, the tank tracks are not infallible, they can get stuck. They usually have problems with too steep angles in mud-filled ditches or too rugged terrains. It was very common for Soviet tanks to lose traction and get stuck in the mud. In the absence of a recovery vehicle, the Red Army's procedure was to jam a log between the tracks and the mud so that the tracks had traction and thus managed to get the tank out of the jam. All this seasonal mud that sat in Belarus and Ukraine gave a great defensive advantage to the Soviets as it greatly limited the Axis's ability to use their blitzkrieg tactics. It gave them plenty of time to establish more robust defensive positions and generally wore down the attacking troops. Normally, this mud would disappear in a matter of days, however Belarus and Ukraine in particular have quite clay soil that limits water drainage, so this mud persists even for months. In Soviet tanks, carrying logs would become a common practice before World War II in the early 30s. The Germans would copy the concept, adapting it to their own tactics. Generally, the Germans would tie them to the sides of the tank in the same way that the crews of American tanks would do later with their tanks. It was very common to see in World War II M4 Sherman tanks with logs tied to the sides and these logs were more focused on the tank's defense. The Americans faced the problem of jams much less frequently, therefore they relied more on recovery armor. The crews of the Shermans were among the most cunning with their tanks, trying by any means to improve their protection. A very common technique was to tie logs to the sides. Obviously a log would provide no protection against piercing projectiles from an anti-tank gun, for example like the Pax. 40 of 75 millimeters, but they were very useful against high explosive anti-tank projectiles, which remember that high explosive anti-tank projectiles need a precise impact and explosion to achieve hull penetration. Hitting a log would unbalance the ammunition and the log would extract the high explosive anti-tank projectile away from the armor, providing great protection against these projectiles. Also these logs provided some protection against magnetic mines, preventing them from sticking to the armor. In fact, the Americans not only used logs but protections such as sandbags or even cement. The logs would also provide some camouflage, blending the tank with the wooded surroundings. So the Americans and British used logs on tanks for defensive purposes against sophisticated German anti-tank weapons, whereas in the Soviet Union the use of logs was not something improvised.
Soviet tanks carry logs deliberately to be able to advance in the difficult and muddy battlefields of the Russians and Ukrainians. This practice has been preserved in Soviet armored vehicles to this day. We can see it in the tanks in T-70, T-80 and even in the T-90 tanks, also in light armored vehicles like those of the Boyevaya Machina Pekoti series. If your Soviet tank gets stuck, you can count on a log to get out of the trouble.